you're going to learn how to make your very own voting system for loadouts or whatever in Fortnite with a little bit of verse. You can create a new project in UEFN or just use your existing project. And what we're going to do is simulate a voting system for choosing your loadout. So let's go ahead and just set up the base devices that we're going to need. So just for fun, I'm going to throw on a prop in here. I'm going to click props in the Fortnite folder and search for shelf. There's this nice tinfoil shelf I'm going to put right over here and zoom in. Now, I want to show some weapons in here. You can pick between this loadout and another one. So I'm going to alt drag to create a second one. So we've got the two loadouts next to each other. Then we're going to go to devices and I'm going to look for the item placer. This is just going to be a visual for my weapons. You're not actually going to use these weapons here. With the item placer selected, I'm going to turn off allow interact and can be damaged. And I'm going to add the item on here that I want to show. In our case, we're just going to do an OG pump shotgun. I'm going to rotate it and just drag it up here slightly. Then we'll go ahead and add an SMG slurp fish. So we've got our very first loadout here. Very, very nice. Now I'm going to scale these up slightly by selecting all three of them pressing the R button or the scale button here, and I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to drag it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to move it into the area that I want it to be. And here we go. Now I'm going to alt drag over here to this loadout, and I'm going to change these to, you know, whatever. These are just for visuals. So what we need is a switch for the player to be able to select the loadout. So I'm going to throw in some switches. Switch. Pretty easy. Just going to move it over where it makes sense to be. And on this switch, I'm going to set the interaction time to one. That's preference. And then I'm going to change the interaction radius to about 0.5. So it's easier to select. All right. I can click this switch and control D to duplicate it and I can drag it right over here. Now what we're going to use is a player counter. Now we're going to use this only for visuals. The player counter is kind of a junky device. I'm not going to lie. So a lot of this kind of stuff you want to do in code, it's way easier. So we're going to use it for the visuals though, because I like how it looks. I like this little icon and the colors there. And that's kind of a good spot too. And there's a few things we need to do on here. First off, uh, if we don't put a zone on this, it's going to count all the players. So I'm going to go all the way down here to use a zone. It's really big. And I'm just going to set it to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. Make it so small out of the way that no one could ever enter into it. And then I don't like a little icon there. So let's go ahead and search our icons. I'm going to select the assault rifle. So right here. Now lastly, I'm just going to change the target player count to four. I have a four player game. Control D or Alt drag this over to the second one. And I now have a loadout counter two. Again, this is just for visuals. So we don't have to use billboards or anything else. We need one more thing is we need a timer to count down. Like imagine you go into a lobby, you've got 15 seconds to pick your loadout. So let's go ahead and add a timer. And for the duration, let's just do 15 seconds. So just to make this complete, let's go ahead and put an item grantor. And what we're going to do is say clear inventory, yes, but grant all items instead of current item. And then what we'll do is we'll pick the exact same weapons that are over here. And if you want to make your life a little bit easier, you can just select your shotgun or whatever item you put there. And in the item list, you can right click and go to copy, go back to the item grantor. And on your first item, you can right click and go to paste. So this item grantor here will give these items when that loadout selected. And then the other thing I want to do is turn off grant on cycle. So I'm going to control D to duplicate the weapon grantor, the item grantor. We already have a shotgun. We don't need the SMG. So I'll just delete the SMG by clicking the arrow, the carrot and click delete. And here for the shotgun, we can just change this to the havoc. So click the havoc copy. And then on this item grantor here, we're going to go ahead and paste the havoc. So now we have, two different loadouts we can choose from. 
but nothing has been connected yet. So now we're gonna write some code. And the reason why we're doing code is because it's easier than, the, than the, using all the event binding devices. That gets really muddied. Anytime you have logic or math you need to run, use code. It's gonna make your life a lot easier and you can do it very simply. Uh, or you can copy and paste what other people have done. What you're gonna make sure you do is go to verse and turn on the verse explorer and make sure you have this window open here. You can find it somewhere on your screen. And now what we're gonna do is create a new, right click this icon here and create a new verse file, okay? New verse file, and I'm gonna call this game underscore manager and create. Then you can click this verse icon to load your code. And here's our fancy code. I've already created this code, so you're gonna see an extra file here that you won't have, but click on your game manager dot verse. And think about what we're trying to do. We're simply trying to see when someone toggles on the switch, we're gonna flip that switch, add to the counter. If they go to the other switch, we need to remove the vote from the other counter. And when the timer ends, let's do some math to see which one had the most votes and then give the items, that's it. And the first thing we always do when creating a device like this is grab our items that are in the game. And we do that using at editable. And we're gonna grab our counters first. So weapon counter one colon player counter device equals player counter device and then curly braces. This is how you create a device. All right, and we're gonna drag it in a little bit later. And then you can type the same thing in for weapon counter too. I've got a nice tool that's going to let me just press tab and put it in there. So weapon counter two. Then what we're gonna do is grab our switches. So at editable, and we're gonna call this weapon switch one of type switch device equals switch device. And then the same thing, weapon switch two and then of a switch device. You can pause the video to catch up here and follow along. We're just grabbing references to the items we already put in our map. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the timer in. So at editable, we're gonna call this load out timer of type timer device equals timer device, curly braces. That's our timer. And then lastly, the two item granters, right? So at editable, load out, Granter one of type item granter device equals item granter device. And one more time, loadout granter two. We just put all of these in the map. Okay, this is literally a code reference of what you've already dragged in there. Really cool stuff. So, what we want to do is we want to listen for when the switches are turned on. Bloop. And when they're turned on, let's go ahead and increase the vote on one counter and decrease it on the other as needed. Let's do that now. On begin is a function that's gonna be called the moment your game starts, okay? It's gonna be called right away, automatically, okay? So we're gonna say weapon switch one dot turned on event dot subscribe. We're gonna listen for the turned on event. On switch one turned on. So this is a built-in function by Fortnite. The same thing you can use uh, in the outliner in UEFN. And so we're gonna listen for this event, like so. On switch one turned, on switch one turned on, it's gonna give us the player, which we call the agent in this case, colon void equals, that's just the syntax, don't worry about what that means if, if you've never coded before. And so on switch turned one, uh, on switch one turned on. What do we wanna do? We wanna register that player for the first loadout counter, so the counter updates, and then we want to unregister that player for the other one, so it's not counting in both places, okay? So what we're gonna do, weapon counter one dot register agent. So we're now gonna register that player with the counter for that loadout, and then you're gonna see that icon go boop and go up to one. Excellent. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say weapon switch to dot turn off for agent. Okay, it's gonna turn off the other switch for that player because we don't want that on anymore. And keep in mind, these switch devices are not for everybody. Each switch device can turn on or off for each player. So if you're a player and yours is green, that same switch might be red for somebody else. It's counting your vote only, not the other player's votes. 
And what we can do is we can go over here to these switches back in our project. So loadout switch one and loadout switch two, store state per player. Otherwise it's gonna be for everyone in the game. And a lot of people forget to click this right here, okay? And then lastly, we're gonna say weapon counter two dot unregister. So we're gonna take the other loadout and unregister the player. So if it was a one before, it's now gonna go back to zero. We're unregistering that player, okay? Now we've done that for the first weapon switch. Now we gotta do vice versa, right? So we're gonna say weapon switch two dot turned on event dot subscribe on switch two turned on. And we have not created this function yet. So let's do that now. On switch two turned on, you can, it's gonna give us the agent or the player. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, just in reverse order. Weapon counter two dot register agent, okay? Weapon switch one dot turn off, and then weapon counter one dot unregister. The exact opposite thing. Now we need to just tap into the timer. So if we come up here into on begin, we probably need to listen for our timer. And our timer is called the loadout timer. So we're gonna say loadout timer dot success event, that's given to us by Fortnite, dot subscribe. And then on loadout timer success. That's a function we're gonna create that the timer is going to call when it's done. So we'll just create it right down here. And it's a little bit different on this one. It is gonna give us an agent, but we're gonna put a question mark in the front of the word agent this time, the lowercase agent. How do we count the votes and figure all this complicated stuff out? It's actually very easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if weapon counter one dot get count is greater than weapon counter two, dot get count, what do we wanna do? In this case here, I'll make a comment, we wanna give loadout one. So if the weapon counter one has more votes than weapon counter two, let's give loadout one. And conversely, else if weapon counter two dot get count is greater than weapon counter one dot get count, we wanna give loadout two, okay? Pretty cool. Now you're probably thinking, well, what about a tie? What if, what, what about that situation? Well, we're gonna handle that right now. So in the first two cases, we just care if one got more votes than the other. However, if it was zero votes or there was a tie, okay, if things just didn't work out, we're gonna pick a random loadout. So it just keeps going forward no matter what. Pretty cool, right? So we're gonna make a new variable called rand, short for random. You can name this whatever you want. Uh, and we're gonna say colon equals get random int. Int meaning integer, just a number, okay? A number between one and two. One or two, basically. Now it's giving us a red squiggly because we have to import this module at the top. So we can do that now. We can say using verse.org slash random, okay? So now what's gonna happen is it's gonna generate a random number for us between one and two. We only have two loadouts. If you had three loadouts, it would be between one and three or between one and four, you get the idea. And what we're going to do is say, if rand equals one, what do we wanna do? We want to give loadout one. Else, otherwise, give loadout two. Cool, that's it. That's our math right there. And this is the hard part with using devices in UEFN. You gotta do a bunch of weird stuff in order to do this logic, much easier here in code, okay? Anything with math or logic, if else, do in code. Uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches. So now we just need to give the weapons, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to say, uh, choose loadout one, and uh, make another function called choose loadout two. It's yelling at us because we haven't written the code yet. And then what we'll do is we'll just go through all the players who are in the game and give them the loadout. So in our case here, we're gonna make a for loop for each player in get play space dot get players and a colon. Uh, so each of the players in the game, in the play space, we're gonna say loadout grantor one dot grant item player. Same thing 
in this other function, except loadout grantor2. Okay, so for each player in getPlayspace.getPlayers, loadout grantor2.grantItem. All right, now we just connect these functions here, like a so. So we're going to say choose loadout1 with the parentheses to call your function. This one's going to be choose loadout2. This one's going to be choose loadout1 and choose loadout2. Excellent. So we do the votes first, and if the votes don't work out, we'll just pick a random one. No big deal. Pretty cool stuff. That's it. That's all the code right there. That's all we had to do. It may seem like a lot, but it's not. It's very straightforward. Just takes practice. Back to our UEFN, I'm going to go to verse, build verse code, and then in my content browser, I'm going to click creative devices, and you're going to see this game manager or whatever you called your code. And it's an object here. And on the right hand side with it selected, I'm going to turn off visible and game. We don't want to see that. And look at all these little things that say none. These are our editables or devices that we already created. So weapon counter one is loadout counter one. Weapon counter two is loadout counter two. I could have named them the same. I should have. Uh, weapon switch three is going to, or weapon switch one is going to be weapons loadout switch one. Weapon switch two is loadout switch two. And if you see these little icons here, it, it'll actually select them in the editor so you know exactly which one you're working with. Uh, but back to our device over here, we need to fill out the rest. The loadout timer, let's go ahead and click that and click the timer device. And I probably need to rename that. So we're gonna call this, press F2 and call this uh, loadout timer, just to make it more readable. And then loadout grantor one, and loadout grantor 2. We just connected our code to things that are actually in the game. Super, super cool. All right. And then we've got these two players here. I'm going to rotate them. I pressed E to rotate, E to rotate, move them a little bit closer. And then I want to hide these things. So I'm going to click both spawners and turn off visible in game and save that. And this is looking pretty fancy here. And there's one more thing I want to do just for my game is I'm going to click both of these item granters. And what I want them to do is equip the granted item, item to grant one. That way they just get the weapons and they can start right away. Okay. And there's one more thing we need to make sure we do on the timer. Make sure start at game start is enabled, or you can start it in your own code or somewhere else. In our case, we're just going to start it when the game starts. Now let's build it and see if it all works. All right, we have 15 seconds to pick a loadout. If I select this one, this should say one, this should say zero. And if I select this one, this one should say one, and this one should say zero. Hooray, and I should get the Havoc and a Slurpee Fish. And sure enough, I did. How cool is that? So that is working. Let's test it with the other one just to be sure. And here we go. One, and then one. We picked a different one this time, and I would expect to see these three items now. And we did it. That's just magical. See you next time.